The Shure SM7B is a super popular podcast microphone. So many of the well-known podcasters are using this microphone. In this video, I'm going to show you my ultimate Rodecaster Pro 2 settings and some of my thoughts and feedback on using this particular mic. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. It sound right, boy. By the end of the video, you're going to be a Shure SM7B and Rodecaster Pro 2 expert. With that said, Shure SM7B, it's not something I use every day, day to day. I've tested this out versus other microphones, and I use other microphones in my day to day work. But the Shure SM7B has a unique sound. It's very good. It's dynamic. It rejects a lot of noise, and it works perfectly for podcasters. With that said, I am a fan of using the bigger windshield on it as opposed to the default thinner one that comes included with the microphone. Why is that? Well, unfortunately, unlike other microphones like the Electro Voice RE20, it hasn't really got a very good inbuilt pop filter. So I find this windshield, while reducing a few of the frequencies in my voice, stops a little bit of that popping. It's unfortunate, but I even hear it on some of the really popular podcasts that this microphone is a little poplier, poppier <laughs> and popular than other microphones. Um, also, I wanted to let you know that on the back, usually there are settings just here. Just there, there are settings on the back where you can roll off the low end and you can do uh, amplitude increase and decrease and things like that. I've left those settings on neutral just so there's no confusion as I show you some of these settings. And finally, there's no need for a booster like a DBX in your chain or a cloud lifter or a FET head or anything like that. The Revolution preamps in the Rodecaster Pro 2 are awesome and they do the job for you and actually adds really clean gain to the microphone, probably much cleaner than you could get through analog gear. So with that said, I'm here in the settings for the microphone plugged into channel 4 on my Rodecaster Pro 2, currently selected as a Rode Pod mic, so probably not the best setting. I should probably scroll across and say dynamic. Okay, there we go. We're now a dynamic microphone. It does take a few seconds once you select a new mic profile for the audio to come back in. Now, you can see I'm rather quiet there. I'm not hitting the green rails, and you need to hit that uh, for all the effects to work. Otherwise, you're not going to hit the threshold for some of the effects like compression and DSing to work. So I'm going to need to do a bit of a gain boost. Then we can do that. We can make it much louder. And here I'm going to suggest a level increase of let's go to 60 dB. At 60 dB, actually, I'm much louder than I was at the start of the video. And this microphone is really showing off its sound and sounding pretty good with the default processing settings there from the Rodecaster Pro 2. Obviously, you can play with depth, sparkle and punch which just kind of improve your sound if you're in a hurry to get a good sound. I think the default neutral settings right here on the Rodecaster Pro 2 are really good, and you probably don't need to tweak them much. But if you are a tweaker, then why not hit the advanced key over here and let's look at all the different processes we can add to the Shure SM7B. First of all, a high-pass filter. We can roll off low end, and as I increase that, you'll hear my voice thin out and then decrease it right the way down, and we get that boomy bass. You know, if you've ever listened to uh, certain podcasts and you're like, how have they got such a deep voice, they're probably not doing any high-pass filter. So if that's your bag, if you prefer to have the full frequencies in your voice, make that neutral. Make that absolutely nothing. Make it the lowest value, which is 20 hertz. But you can boost it up without impacting the voice up to around, let's listen here, probably around to around about 120, and still you retain most of the low-end frequencies in your voice, which is good. And it will also reduce plosives. So I suggest about 120 hertz on this Shure SM7B. Looking at the DSer, it's kind of working. It's working quite nice. We've got a frequency of 5,000 hertz. 5,000 hertz is pretty good. If we go up too high, then 8,000 hertz is not as effective. And let's try there. She sells seashells. She sells seashells. Okay, so we're looking at probably for my voice on this mic about 5,500. Now, of course, you can see in some of my other videos on my YouTube channel videos on exactly how to set a DSer and look for those SE frequencies inside the spectral frequency display of software like Adobe Audition. But for now, I'm going to leave the DSer as that is. Noise gate works well. This microphone rejects a lot of background noise anyway, so you don't need to go too harsh with this. If you really want to cut off the background and have only your voice heard, you can increase things such as the threshold. So I can turn that up like this, and we'll see that we're biting into my speech now. And this is affected further if I change the range setting over here and make that a bigger range setting now. When I go quiet, everything goes quiet. As you can see, that gate kicking in right there on the processing there. But if you notice your voice is getting cut off a bit, go back to the threshold at the top, 
and just ease that off a little bit so it's not cutting right into your speech. And you see that quite clearly as you see your speech amplitude uh, shown in real time by a graph that's moving along. I think that's a pretty good setting. Minus 38.6 dB and a range of 44 dB on the Shure SM7B. Let's move on. We've got compression. This is pretty good. Uh, again, I might increase the ratio on this and make this, say, 3 to 1. This gives me a bit of extra punch. And the threshold I can move down a little bit, maybe to minus 33. And there we go. Now we've got the red coming in, showing that I'm having a little bit of gain reduction. It's flattening out my voice and making it a little more punchy. We've also got equalizer. I'm pretty happy with this, but if we want some more sparkle, I'll increase the high gain there. And we can also change the frequency on the high bell as well. So we can move that down and up depending on where we want to go. I'd say somewhere around 10,000 Hertz is good. The frequency response of this microphone is actually really good. So I wouldn't play with the frequencies too much on the equalizer and I'd leave them as they are. The exciter and the, uh, we've got the big bottom and the oral exciter, they seem to be doing the job really well. This is a really good neutral sounding podcast microphone that once you've got the basics set up here and panning, you obviously don't need to work on. You don't want to go left or right unless you're doing a sort of stereo podcast with you coming from the left and the right. But I wouldn't advise that kind of thing. So as you can see, this Shure SM7B is really easy to set up in the Rodecaster Pro 2. You don't need any external analog hardware or anything like that. So a microphone that traditionally is really hard to boost in volume is really easy to boost in volume right inside the Rodecaster Pro 2. If indeed you do have any questions on the settings or setup for your Shure SM7B using the Rodecaster Pro 2, do let me know in the comments down below. If you've not done so already, check out musicradiocreative.com. This is where my team of 200 plus audio professionals can help you with voiceovers, radio jingles, DJ drops, podcast intros, music, ads, and much, much more.